Hi then, people. Welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. A little bit subdued this morning because, as you imagine, well, we all are. We all are. It ruins your weekend, doesn't it? A uh, bit of a flip on the day of Leeds today is going to be uh, the final word, of course, on Leeds versus Manchester United, where Leeds were beaten 5 1 away at Old Trafford. Uh, before we get into the video, please smash a like on the stream, comment. And hit the notification bell. We'll be doing some watch-alongs today of some other Premier League games, if you can bring yourself to do that. And please subscribe to the channel as well. I'm so close to 6,000 subscribers. Uh, but let's get into today's video. So, guys, yeah, um, as you all know, we were beaten yesterday um, by Manchester United at Old Trafford. 5-1. That's now 11 goals conceded in two games against our biggest rival. Um, it's not great, is it? Um, Bielsa was saying it was a better performance than last time. I don't agree. Uh, we missed Calvin Phillips massively. I know Calvin Phillips in that side. I'm not saying we win the game, but Robin Cock wasn't great in the DM. I'm not hammering him personally, he just wasn't high. And if people want to say he did okay, but Bruno Fernandes scored a hat-trick, you know. Uh, Paul Pogba, it was the Paul Pogba and Bruno show. I have to give them praise, right? Paul Pogba was immense. Paul Pogba was immense. Four assists, that's no mean feat. The manner of the assist, the Greenwood goal, you know, the ball through. The first time passing to Bruno for his first goal, I thought Bruno took his his goals well. Uh, of course, big shout-out Luke Ayling. Luke Ayling's goal was absolutely phenomenal. What a chance for him to get his first Premier League goal against the rival at that point as well. I'm thinking game on. My prediction of 2-1 is, is, is still looking good. Um, and then I think it was 12 minutes. I think in 12 minutes, we were 4-1 down. 12 minutes later, we were 4-1 down. Um you know, it, it, it's like soul destroying, isn't it? It's soul destroying. As some of you know, I was on the Dom Robbie show, and that was rough, man. I'm not gonna lie, it was rough. Um, but Man United deserved it. Leeds United were not at the races. I can't name you one player that was good yesterday. I can't. I struggled to name you one player that was good. Um Obviously, we're going to struggle anyway. Look, the depth's an issue at Leeds United. Bielsa doesn't want a big squad. But when we have injuries, it really tells. We know that. We struggle to find a Calvin Phillips replacement. Cox, OK in there. Uh, against lesser opposition. Yeah, fair enough. I said to you yesterday on my preview, or sorry, Friday night on the preview, if Cox in there, we'll struggle to win the game. Because, and that's, I'm not hammering Cock. He's up against elite ballers. Bruno Fernandes is an elite player. He had a point to prove after his rubbish Euros. There's fans back in the ground. He thrives on that situation. He got himself a hat trick. So, of course, Cock's always going to struggle. I think the centre back struggled with the pace. Uh, Greenwood is an elite finisher. You know, when that ball came through from Pogba, I knew when it was Greenwood on the end of it, that's going in the back of the net. I mean, Fred scored, for God's sake. Fred scored um, to make it five. When he's scoring, you know there's something amiss. Um, you know, there was the chance early door. Like, for the first 10, 15 minutes, it was all Manchester United. Of course, we had a couple of chances. Rodrigo and Bamford, I don't know if they're getting each other's way. Rodrigo, it's a decent header. I thought it was going in the back of the net. It obviously didn't. Let's talk about Rodrigo while we're there as well. Um, I was thinking about this on the way back. Like, I like Rodrigo. I think he's a great player. But I don't know if he's suited to Leeds United. I think, it, you know, I've heard the old stats, aren't we boys say this and not that I agree with everything they say. And it's took me a while to see their point with Rodrigo. You know, they've said it, it, it felt, the signing felt more like this is a player who's Spain's number nine, who's an elite player, who's available for a cut down price. We can't afford to miss this opportunity. But when you actually strip it back, is he right for Leeds United? I hope, maybe not. And I hope I'm wrong because I was expecting big things. But in that midfield against Manchester United or against top level operators, he, he was he was missing. He was missing and, and got and got chalked off at, at, at half time. Um, obviously, Stuart Dallas moved into midfield in the second half. He was the one that laid on the assist for Ailing. What a shot it was from 25 yards out, went straight in the top corner. No keeper saving that. 
And I genuinely was buzzing at that point. Of course you are, because you scored against Manchester United at Old Trafford. It's one all, it's game on. We know notoriously BL's a second half that we do better wasn't the case because 12 minutes later, we were 4-1 behind. And is there a case of shoring up shop at that point? You're at your most vulnerable when you concede. Maybe there is a case of that, but we know we're not going to get that under Bielsa. And I'm okay with that. You know, we know sometimes these results can happen under Bielsa. Do I think we'll be okay? Of course. Do I think we'll beat Everton? Yes. Do I think we'll beat Burnley? Yes. Six points from nine. You're looking good. What's going to frustrate me is is the rhetoric from the media is going to be second season syndrome and you're going to have to back that off as a Leeds United fan. And if we were to lose to Everton, which I don't think we will, packed out Ellen Road, first game back after so long, Premier League, it's going to be amazing what an atmosphere that's going to be. And that's what I do now. I'm just looking ahead. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dwell too much on the fixture. You know, I'm not. Um, you know, just to, just to give you like, give you a bit of optimism. The 6-2 last year was actually followed by two wins and two clean sheets. You know, so one performance does a season not make, you know. Um, so don't buy into that. If anyone says, yeah, you were beat, just remind them. Well, last season when we were beat 6-2, we won the next two and didn't concede any. So expect more of the same. Calvin's going to be back in the side. Junior Firpo's going to be playing at left back, you know. Um, so that's good. That, that, that can only be a positive. Do I think we need to get more bodies in? Yes. Am I asking for the world? No. Like, we do need another midfielder. We do need an, another midfielder in there. Ideally, we need another winger. Because I, like a lot of Leeds fans, and I think you guys watching this will agree, when we've seen Costa coming on, when we're losing the game, you're like, well, nah. There's, not that we were ever going to get back into the game at that point, but as Leeds United fans, you're like, really? They're bringing on Jadon Sancho, and we're bringing on Helder Costa. We need some, we need some depth there. If it's a Ryan Kent. If it's a Noah Lang, we need something extra. Because God forbid, if Calvin got a long-term injury, if a Rafinha or a Harrison got a long-term injury, we're snookered. We're snookered. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I get a lot of people say, oh, Manchester United, great side, spent a lot of money. We're a, a quick... And I get all that. But it doesn't mean you have to look at it glass half full when you've conceded 11 goals in two games against your biggest rival. That's not cool. Do you know what I mean? I think it's frustrating, but Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba ran the show. Paul Pogba ran the show from the left. Bruno Fernandes gave Cock a nightmare, you know. Um, obviously, there was errors in there as well, you know. Um, and when them two are on it, it's going to be hard to stop, you know. Um I found it very strange. Bielsa, you know, I'll go through some of his comments. Bielsa says, it's difficult to take the ball off Man United and turn any possession into chances. Says Phillips was under consideration to start, um, but says today's imbalance was a collective issue, not an individual one. He said he liked how Cox played. Um, says he was dynamic, willing and committed. Okay. I don't think Cox had a good game. But is willing, committed, determined, okay? Like for, for, oh, well, he was willing. Oh, he was committed. He had a go. That's what that feels like a little bit to me. And that's not okay. You know what I mean? Oh, well, he had a go. Better luck next time, Robin. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's not, I'm not hammering Robin because he's a great player, man. He's a great player. As a centre-back. He can play in the CDM. He's better than Strauk in the CDM. And against lesser opposition, he'll have a better game. But when you're going up against Manchester United, when they're in the form that we're in, it's always going to be difficult. Um, <clears throat> Marcelo Bielsa went on to say it was difficult for us to recover the ball and difficult for us to create danger. I have to agree with that. We didn't create a lot of danger, did we? The succession of goals after we equalised, we could not react. In general, they were superior to us, clearly. To have lost the way we lost, can't be described just as a blip. You can't really. It's the first game of the season, man. If it continues, then yes, it is a blip. It's 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 more than a blip, isn't it? But I expect Leeds United to be a totally different animal next weekend. Maybe we'll have some extra bodies in the door. Not that they'll play. Um, you know what I found strange as well. Bielsa said Leeds were better this season at Old Trafford than they were last. Um, he said in the previous game there was a massive difference between the two teams. Today there were fewer moments when that was the case. 
I don't agree with that. I remember saying after the 6-2 that we were abject, that we were poor. Um, and, and, and it was more bent out of frustration. You know, I was I was feeling it. I was feeling it. Um, and Leeds fans were saying, no, we had a goal. We were actually quite decent. OK, on reflection, we were. I don't think we were today. I don't think we were today. And I think a lot of Leeds fans will agree with that. Um, but like I say, I think, look, maybe when we go one up, there's a case of, right, protect what you've got. Let's go again. But... It wasn't the case. And in 12 minutes, you fall one down. You know, Luke Ayling did the post-match interview. It's always him, in it? He said, a really poor five minutes in the second half cost us the game. I know it's a bad result for us, but it's great to see the fans back. We can't wait to get back to our place next weekend. There are a few lads who have come back late from internationals. We will go again, you know? And when you say a few lads, you're talking about Calvin, aren't you? We're missing Calvin. He's the linchpin. He He's integral. Do I think we win the game? Maybe not. Maybe we get a point. You just don't know, do you? But we're certain. Look at what Calvin did to Bruno in that second reverse victory and it was nil-nil. He pocketed him. He marked him out of the game. Today, Bruno ran the show and got a hat-trick, you know? So there you go. Look, I'm, I'm disappointed. I think we all are. But... Bruno Fernandes and, and Paul Pogba, when they're on it, are, are, are really hard to stop. And when you're gifting them chances, when you're, when, you're, when you're so open, we have no midfield at time, of course they're going to punish you. You know, Greenwood is a great finisher. Bruno gets the three, I think, Lindelof, that great ball over the top. Um, yeah, it is what it is. I can't really talk too much on what, what Leeds had. I, I think the Roberts one wasn't a penalty. The VAR rules change now. Um, maybe if VAR last season, he probably gets a penalty. I think VAR last season, Bruno's probably offside as well. It looked offside when I was watching it anyway, but that's the change in VAR, and that's better. That's better. I know it's meant that we've not got a penalty and conceded a goal, but it, the flow of the game was much better. The flow of the game was much better. I thought the ref had a good game. Um you know, disappointing to see some unsavoury scenes and also the stuff from their fans and the chants from our fans. It's not great, but, you know, it's just not great. It's not great. And it puts a, a, a dampener on, like, us being back in the Premier League because you know what the media is, leads, dirty leads. So it's always going to be the rhetoric. So, um, but look, I'm disappointed like we all are. But we dust ourselves down, we go again, don't we? We dust ourselves down, we go again. We've got Everton next weekend at home at a packed out Ellen Road, then Burnley, and then an international break. Hopefully, by that international break, we'll have completed some business. We'll have a new midfielder and a winger in the door because Bielsa's happy with the squad and everything Leeds United have given him in terms of four parts, etc. But I do think we need extra bodies in there. I think Bielsa and Otto maybe will look at it like that. Maybe Radrazadi will look at it like that and say, OK, yeah, we need some extra bodies because we're calling on Costa and our midfield is all over the shop if we have injuries. You know what I mean? Because it's a knock-on effect. It's a domino effect at Leeds United because of the strength in depth. If there is a player injured, it's square pegs in round holes. And when you're playing top-level clubs, that's always going to be an issue. Um, but look, I'm OK. This is what I'm saying. I'm OK. I, I'm not OK with the result. But overall, I'm OK. I'm not worried. Uh, uh, no, no reason to, to be worried. Although the cynics, right? Listen to this. This is something I'm going to leave you with, all right? This was tweeted out by Leeds Memories, OK? 40 years ago, we had a good end to the season, 1980-81. We finished ninth. Right, big name signings were promised. We only got one big name in Peter Barnes. The opening day of the 1981 82 season on TV, we lost 5 1 at Swansea. The players scored a hat trick. The next game was Everton at home. Wow, similarities are crazy. And guess what? We got relegated that season. But yeah, I'll just leave you with that sobering thought there. But now, nah, listen, we'll be okay. Okay, we might not get Europe, which we'd have hoped for. Uh, maybe if we bring bodies, maybe. But I think another mid-table finish is good. It's good. But it is only one game. We'll probably win the next two and I'll be bouncing again and then beat Liverpool after we return from the international break. But listen, thank you as always for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in on this video. And of course, hit that notification bell. And I'll see you very soon. Peace out. Leads, leads, leads.